What's up everybody, it's your favorite Littlefoot's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at Planet X Sludge. This is, the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the one that's not really in the game, right? So like, it's funny because I was thinking, I was like, this one feels weird to me, but it probably feels weird because he's not really in the game. Isn't that interesting? So he comes with a few accessories, two uh, big sledgehammers uh, for smashing, just uh, this gray plastic with the red translucent underneath, and then these two um, big guns. This got a bit more going on. It's got the silver plastic. It's got this gray paint over top. It's got the red paint and all that. So these are actually really quite nice uh, accessories. And then we have uh, this fella. So let's take a quick look. And I'm sure it plugs all in. It looks as, as ridiculous as you as you can imagine. Um, so we got nothing to go down. Uh, sludge sludge is always an issue, right? Uh, figuring out a way to do it. Um, we have uh, this piece that hinges just this far. And then we have the swivel here, so that's nice. And then we have the jaw, uh, which opens down to there. And if you open the top part of the jaw up to there. So pretty limited here. But I'm going to point out something that's really cool. Like, they have a screw in there. They still paint it inside of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it sucks that we have the screw there and not there and all that. Like, I I'm on board. I get it. I hear you. But it is nice that they at least took the time to paint it. Like, I don't know. Pride, right? Okay. So we got a uh, hinge here. Getting you a little in and out action, so to speak. Shout out to, uh, what's that movie? I don't know. Swivel here, in out. Gave her a case of the old in out. Uh, Clockwork Orange. Um, swivel here, and then we have the knee here, a little bit back and forth. And then we have a little toe tilt, uh, which is nice. And all this red paint looks good. And the paint throughout on this one is, is back up to the standards we've come to expect. So that's a good thing. Uh, on the on the back side of the unit, so to speak, we got a ratcheted thigh here. Uh, these this moves, you know. I don't I don't know what's the right position. I kind of think I like them out to the side a bit. I'm not sure. And then the swivel here, knee ratcheted once again, getting you just about 90 degrees. Let's give it to him. What do you say? And then uh, a little bit of a toe tilt. If you want to kind of count that. And then we got a, a little bit of a tail movement, kind of a cheat. A little bit of an up and down, but not not really. Uh, and then the paint throughout looks good. The reds look good. Um, we're, we, it's some of it's red paint, and some of it's like the, supposed to be the glowing red paint effect. Either uh, way, it all looks good. Silver paint underneath looks good. Um, clean bot. Uh, a little bit more um, articulation issues with the uh, dinosaur than I'm I'm used to with them doing because their dinosaurs have been really well articulated, especially in the legs. Um, but it still, it still will get the job done, no problem. All right, let's rock and roll. So pull this piece down and then swivel it and you collapse it back up, which is a shame because you've got to cover up all that paint. So that paint is just there for dinosaur mode. Just want to point that out to you. Uh, close that up. Bring this piece out and this piece up. And then you've got to untab these legs. Make sure you untab that part down there. Uh, Bit important and untab the feet I believe yeah and bring down the knees and let's see all right so these just fold in simple same on the other side simple and then fold these down and that, well, I guess you can leave them up doesn't matter options yours and rotate these arms down well, I guess you want to bring these hands out first oh these open up also to give you access to that and There we go. All right. So far, so good, right? Let's raise the camera. Take a second. Raise the camera so I ain't got to fight with it. Split the tail. Fold the tail out. Fold this piece inside. And then bring this down. Same on the other side. 
bring this piece down. Open this up here, and then bring this in, swivel this around, sit that up in there, and then these pieces grab uh, the dyno head and lock it in place. And that's, that's sludge. And uh, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk uh, at length about this guy because there's some good stuff and there's some bad stuff. So let's just get right into it. Ball joint on the head, a little loose. Face sculpt might be accurate. Uh, doesn't look bad on camera, but I can tell you in person, looking at it right here, it looks a little bizarre. Red paint looks good on it. Silver paint looks good on it. So that's nice. Swivel's good. Nothing really down. A little bit up, so that's fine. Plenty of light piping if that's your thing. It's not mine, but you're welcome to it. Gray paint here all looks good. Translucent plastic to break it up all looks good. Little gray paint on the wires, little nuances like that. Great touch. Nicely applied. I definitely appreciate it. Arms. We got a double hinge here to get you out to there. And then it might even... Yeah. So a little limited little limited but uh, definitely not the worst and he's a big bulky bot so I guess I'm kind of okay with it I do feel like um, I want him to go up a little bit more uh, bicep swivel ratcheted elbow wrist swivel fingers on a base pin knuckle all the red paint still looks good same on the other side same situation and still looks good uh, waist swivel works fine. Hips ratcheted out and forward. They're basically wide jointed, uh, which is a little weird, but it's it's not the worst thing in the world. Thigh swivel, double jointed knee, getting you if you work it right, all the way back to there. So that's not a problem. Uh, knee pads articulate in order to give you the articulation. Did I just whatever? And then uh, toe tilt. No rocker. Oh, all these uh, come down as well. Um, and yeah, and then the backpack. Okay, so... Alright, we'll, we'll get to it in final thoughts. Cause, but, but there it is. Alright. And it's... Uh, it's interesting. Size comparison wise, there he is next to Starscream. What holds his weapons just fine. Final thoughts wise, this one is simpler, uh, but as a result, it kind of pays a price for it. Like, it doesn't really work as well. Uh, there's some weird, like, proportion issues, like how long this piece is here, like how long the top of his shoulders are, um, like up around the collarbone area, and then, like, there's no ankle rocker, which is strange to me anyway. Um, the Like, the backpack is, like, kind of inefficient. Uh, so, like, it's just bizarre because, like, it, it, I haven't seen so far, I haven't seen them take a whole lot of shortcuts. But this one seems like a lot of shortcuts were taken. And, uh, I mean, like, there is some good stuff going on. Like, I mean, he stands fine. And he's got a lot of upper body bulk. And, as you can see, he's standing like a champ. And I just picked him up and put him back down. No problem. But it just, there's just, like, uh, it, it, like, it pays the cost of simplicity. Like, it, it's a very easy transformation. It's it's very simple, uh, you know, and there's not that many moving pieces. And then, in the end, it ends up looking weird. And then has a hard time posing in any position other than kind of standing straight up and down without losing. Like, ankle rockers are kind of, like, they're mandatory, in my opinion. Like, a figure without an ankle rocker is just, I can't do much with it. You know, you can't even put it in a decent A stance because the ankle rocker won't allow it. So, um, um, that's kind of a, a deal breaker for me. So that's a bit of a bummer, but you know that that's my main complaint here with this guy. It just, of all of them, this is the only one that's kind of given me the the phoned in kind of feel. And there's still like there's still plenty of pride though, you know. Like don't get me wrong, like there's there's paint around the scrolls and stuff like that. Like I love stuff like that. I appreciate stuff like that. I notice stuff like that. Planet X, if you're listening, like I'm the guy that notices stuff like that. Uh, but with that being said, it's just it just feels a little off. But there's still plenty of kind things to say. The The paint is still great. Materials are still good. Sculpt is still nice. 
minus the proportion issues, but I think that might be a likeness issue. So I'm going to give it a pass. The joints are fantastic. Like if Snarl had some of these joints, Snarl would be a beast. You know, the, the ratchets here are not to be played with. They're not taking names. Then they're out for death. You know, they want your head. They're nice. They feel good, Mac. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a well-made figure. It's just, uh, it just seems, it's just, it's really bizarre to me that, that it wouldn't kind of go the extra mile. And I feel like with the other ones I've looking at, I'm like, wow, like they even made this fold up for the sake of folding up. Like it just seems like they go the extra mile. And this one, it just seems like, you know, maybe they just ran a marathon and just, you know, needed to get to the car. Uh, so that's kind of my, 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 my big issue with this one. But it's, it's still not hateful. And we'll wrap up tomorrow and, and have a more in-depth talk about how I feel about all of them. But, yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. Now, Doc, yes. one thing I'm not sure if you know about or not, mm -hmm. but I'm a bit of a Star Wars fan. Oh, I had no idea. But you know what my holy grail is in Star Wars? I'm after a life-size maquette. Fully detailed of just George Lucas's throat. I mean, seriously, what's up with that thing? It's like his face brought luggage to the party. I don't understand it. I would imagine that he's fairly well off. He probably has people that tend to his laundry. There's no need to pack it in your throat to take it down to the laundromat. It's like he's got a bag full of socks up in his neck. Well, that explains why there's so many seagulls at the end of uh, Force Awakens. It's George Lucas's mating grounds. But well, Mr. Skullface, it's not really appropriate to make fun of someone else's physical appearance. I tell you, ever seen a silhouette of it? That's the Phantom Menace. His throat turned to the dark side. Can you imagine the razor it takes to clean that bad boy up? Are you going to need one of those bendy ones? The Mach 23 with the bendable razors to get around all that. It's like the lazy river. That guy can hop right out of the plane going down, land right in the ocean, just... Oh, it's fine. Disney's white slavers, it's fine. White slavers. What yeah, what was up with that? I look like, here's the thing, you sold it, Mac. Let it go. You know, don't sing me the sad song about it's the girlfriend, it's the whatever, I can't get over it. Maybe he should let it go. Let it go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wait for bringing that nightmare up. But yeah, like, just just be done with it. Yes. Don't, don't trash talk it and all this kind of stuff. Now, how does that make you feel? I mean, it makes me upset. Now, maybe it was his throat talking. You know what was in the, the super-duper special edition they were going to release? When Han finds Luke and Hoth, he was going to cut George Lucas' throat open and staff, stash uh, Luke up inside the throat. I thought it smelled bad on the outside, if you know what I'm saying. So what is it about Mr. Lucas' statements that anger you so? I, I, I just feel like... <clears throat> I feel like now there's like now there's like all this resentment coming through. It just gives the whole new trilogy like a, a, no. like a, it's a muddy, bad state. Mudding up your sandbox. Exactly. Just I let understand. it go. You sold it for $4 billion. You probably should have gotten more. Shout out to Samuel L. Jackson. You probably should have gotten more, but you didn't. Yes. You sold it for $4 billion. You donated that, so that's off to you. But don't, don't trash talk it, Mac. Just let it go. You're fine. It's fine. It's over. Well, let's, Be done let's, with it. let's look at it real quick. You look at this childhood treasure of Star Wars, and then he sells it to Disney. What was your initial feeling then? Uh, it was fear. Fear? It was fear. Yes. I, and, I so, and so now, you, you're fearful. And how has Disney proven that purchase to you? You know, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm having a hard time concentrating on your questions, because now I'm imagining the throat next to the flannel that he usually wears, that tight flannel. And it's something about all those stripes next to that sort of bulbous powdered donut around his chin with the little gray hairs looks like a big powdered donut but I just feel like man like I feel like Star Wars is in a good spot and I, I don't so you're happy with Disney yeah and I mean like you know he's like so I, maybe I, now you're defending Disney from the statements of Mr. Lucas in a bit but you know what else it is it's just that like this whole new mentality of everybody's a racist mm. you know like I don't buy into that like like, George Lucas is married to a black woman. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, the comment that he made is a, like an anti-white comment anyway. Yes. So, don't try to make him into a racist. Do you He's not believe a racist. That, do you believe that somebody... He's who, a simpleton who's past his prime that doesn't know when to let go and, and, and let his throat talk for him and got out of control. He's drunk on throat.
I tell you, if there's ever a man that should have his thyroid check, he looks like one of his own monsters now. And it's kind of the sad story. It's like he's turned to the dark side. Mm. He is the apprentice, and his throat is the new master.